From Bicycle Sundays here at the Bronx River Parkway, this is the GCN Show. Look by no hands! Oh! Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, the big lessons we've learned from cycling, including, but not limited to, dreaming and being matchy-matchy. We've also got a Brompton designed by Radiohead. Good news for German cyclists, good news for cycling commuters, and a bike that costs £44,000. And it's a rally town bike. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that you could invest in what's been touted as the future of bike gear. So remember this from Eurobike a few years ago, a good few years ago, in fact, looking at Cy there. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, anyway, Ceramic Speed launched Driven as a revolutionary concept to decrease drivetrain friction. Now, it's still in development, so they're now crowdfunding to try and make it into a reality. Which sounds very tempting, doesn't it? But if you do want to invest in drivetrains, just for your information, Shimano's share price has increased by about 70% over the last year. Just saying. Yeah, now we also learned that the next Peter Sagan might very well be his son. Marlon, here he is casually riding down some steps at the age of three. Skills that Geraint Thomas would certainly be jealous of <laughs> because we also learned this week he just can't stay upright. Last year it was a rogue water bottle at the Giro d'Italia. This year he just can't hold on to his handlebars. <laughs> Well, Geraint, but tell us, uh, tell us what happened in, the, in this, uh, with this crash. Oh, I just had no feeling whatsoever in my hands. I tried to change gear, but instead I just lost the bars. And, uh, oh, it's so frustrating, because uh, even if I just stayed in that gear and just come second, you know, and, oh, but to deck it there, I feel like a right whopper, but yeah. You've got to love a Garrett Thomas interview, hasn't he? He's always just brutally honest. He's always great to watch, isn't he? Uh, all ended well for him, though. He won the general classification at Romandie after a strong performance in the final time trial. Now, just before we get on to our main point of discussion for today, we have some big racing-related news, actually. We do indeed. Over on GCM+, Plus, we will have exclusive coverage of the Giro d'Italia in the USA and Canada. Happy days. And we'll also be showing it in all other GCN Plus territories, except for Latin America and New Zealand. Sorry, guys. So if you're in Australia, the UK, or all of Europe for that matter, or in a host of other included countries, we're really looking forward to having you join us over what is sure to be a thrilling three weeks of action. Oh, absolutely. Always is, isn't it? Yates, Bernal start as outright favourites, but a lot of eyes are going to be on the return of both Remco Evenepoel and Dylan Gronewagen from injury and suspension, respectively. Let's hope even if Paul's not struggling like Froome is. I don't think he will be, we'll wait and see. But those are going to be two very interesting stories in themselves, aren't they? Amongst many others that will be told over the course of that three weeks. So it all begins this coming Saturday in Turin with an individual time trial. So make sure you tune in from Midday BST for our live pre-race show. And before we head over to ad-free, uninterrupted live coverage, it's going to be fantastic, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Just let that sink in for a moment. Ad-free, live, and interrupted coverage. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, anyway, so if you haven't already got your GCN Plus subscription, we are confident, very confident in fact, that it'll be £40, pounds, €40 Euros, or $50 well spent, which will give you a whole heap of live racing, plus films and documentaries, over a 12-month period. We'll put a link on screen now, just in case you fancy checking it out. Now, we hope you do. Right, let's move on to our main topic for this week's GCN show. Five lessons we've learned through cycling. This could be interesting. Yeah. It could be interesting. So the first one is that cycling allows you to dream big. For me, that dream was to ride a Grand Tour, and the Giro d'Italia was actually the first one that I ever rode. Really? Mm. Yeah. Who are you riding for? Cervelo Test Team, of yeah. course. And I will forever remember that first Grand Tour because it was my dream come true. I was basically on the start line, rubbing shoulders with the likes of Lance Armstrong, Denny Menshoff, Alessandro Pataki, Mark Cavendish and many others. And although I was often no longer rubbing shoulders with them, about 10 kilometres after the start of racing, <laughs> I definitely had to pinch myself that I was there at all. It honestly felt like a dream, although in some parts a nightmare, <laughs> because it was a blooming hard race. But I wouldn't change that experience for the whole world. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It leads me nicely on to the Mersey Roads Two Day from 2006. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, Dan, that, that's a beautiful story, man. Thanks very much. That is beautiful. Um, which does indeed lead us neatly on to number two, actually. Cycling has also taught us how to lose. 
Um, now, fair enough. For you and I particularly. Yeah, like that's that. because we got our ass kicked <laughs> quite a lot. But actually, it's something that all bike riders have in common. We all have to get used to getting dropped, don't we? we? Do. At some point or another. Uh, and my goodness, is it painful? That is very true. You can lose in any sport, can't you, really? But there's just something particularly cruel about cycling, where to get dropped basically means being on your absolute limit and then very gradually realising that you're not quite good enough. But that getting dropped makes it even harder. Yeah, not just one useful life lesson there, Dan, I think, but three, right? So firstly, that you can often try harder than you think. You learn that when you get dropped. Secondly, if you do hang in there, it always gets easier, mm. doesn't it? You, you, That's why it's so important to hang in there. Exactly, and then thirdly, everyone else is probably suffering too. Not quite as much, though. Sometimes. <laughs> now, another thing that unites us uh, all is that hard work does pay off. So that's, of course, true in life and also true in sport, and especially, I would say, in cycling. It can be hard and painful, yeah. but the rewards of that hard work can lead to the highest of highs. And that doesn't have to be riding a Grand Tour, does it? Or any pro race, for that matter. Or riding around the world in record time, Mark Bowman, or Everesting. Now, a lot of people start out cycling and they couldn't imagine being able to do 100 kilometres in a single ride. That's perfectly normal. The way you felt after just 25 k absolutely exhausted meant that four times that distance seemed impossible. But through hard work and willpower, you eventually do achieve it. Yeah. I'm on a similar journey with press-ups right now. <laughs> 18, uh, you just said. Yeah, but anyways, back to the point though. When you do look back, you wonder how that first 25 k's felt so hard. Mm. But there we go. Anyway, number three, don't neglect your socks. What? Yeah, seriously, Dan. A cycling taught you nothing. I mean, admittedly, I probably wouldn't ever be quite as, you know, matchy-matchy in real life as I tend to be on my bike. But the more you ride, the more you realise little things do matter. Like having a nice pair of socks that give you a bit of a morale boost when you're suffering. Anything else you've learned about socks, Si? Well, it's funny you say that actually, Dan, but yes, horizontal stripes. Very flattering around um, girthy ankles. Horizontal stripes? Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Girthy? Yeah. Mm. Right, yeah. I think we should probably move on from that point. Uh, now, even though cycling can be a really solitary pursuit, uh, it definitely teaches you about teamwork, yeah. doesn't it? Not many sports ask you to sacrifice yourself for the good of a teammate, but if they win, you don't win as well. Yeah, cruel that, isn't it? It is. But uh, if you don't race, uh, that sense of teamwork is still there and you don't get to lose. Like working together to complete an epic ride or perhaps most importantly, and emotionally sometimes, getting a toe off a friend because you're completely cracked and all you can do is follow their wheel in the hope that eventually they will lead you home. From that respect, it is completely different to other team sports, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think there's ever a feeling of survival, really, that comes into sports in the same way that you get with cycling. No. I mean, imagine a round of golf where you might not make it back to the I get drops in golf as well. Oh, do you? Mm. All right. Well, rock climbing and mountaineering. Two team sports where survival is paramount. That is a fair point. Might die. <laughs> cycling, I guess, though, is like that, but just slightly less dangerous. Yeah, and it? a lot more fun. Plus, you get jazzy socks. Are you not allowed to wear jazzy socks in rock climbing? I think you, I think you don't wear socks at all in rock climbing. And in mountaineering, you wouldn't see your socks because they'd be in your heavy winter boots, I, I would imagine. Interesting. Yeah. But you know another lesson of life, that teamwork element, is that in races, you often have to strike up an alliance, don't you, with a rival in a breakaway, yeah. working together all the while plotting ways you can try and screw them over when it comes towards the finish line. Absolutely, big life lesson that one. How to get ahead in life. Uh, and before you ask, uh, we were rubbish at that, clearly. Uh, right, another one. You don't need to be afraid of going into the unknown. There are a lot of unknowns when getting cycling, of course, like how to fix your bike, how to use clipless pedals, or even how to choose the right bike for you in the first place. Or actually when you then start riding, getting lost uh, on roads or trails that are even close to home. Very true again. But although daunting, each of those unknowns soon become knowns, I guess. And that in turn gives you the confidence to continue taking yourself out of your comfort zone, knowing that you can overcome almost anything that is thrown at you on the bike. When was the last time you took yourself outside your comfort zone on a bike side? Sunday. Exploring new trails. And it finished in a double puncture, and I ran out of the tubes. Well, at least you knew how to fix it. Oh, I mean, you couldn't fix it. No, I rode home oh, on the flat. Yeah. <laughs> well, the last life's lesson is that everything is better with a cafe stop. Everything is better with a piece of cake size. Absolutely, it? mate. Very true. Um, you know, also, Dan, cycling has given me loads and loads of other 
completely useless knowledge and lessons as well. Stuff that would bore the pants off normal people at parties, like wattages, yeah, and gear ratios, and a rudimentary knowledge of aerodynamics, or how many grams of carbohydrate the human intestine can absorb in a single <laughs> hour. So one life lesson that we need, and others perhaps even more than us, is a filter. A jargon filter. A jargon filter, or a snooze filter. So yeah, there we go. If anyone's got one of those, please let us know, because that's a life lesson I think we need. <laughs> uh, do make sure you get involved in the comments section. What has cycling taught you about life? I'd be really interested to read those. Serious and humorous comments, both are encouraged below. Look forward to reading those. GCN Inspiration now, where we pick three of our favorite photos submitted to the GCN app over the course of the last seven days, all of which will win a prize. Uh, third prize being the worst, but still good. Second prize being a bit better, and the top prize is generally pretty good. It is, day, yeah. Well, it? Third prize is really good, mate, because it's a pair of Italian striped socks. Perfect. Which way are they striped, Si? Are they going uh, to accentuate your ankles or make them look even bigger? They must be horizontal, surely. <laughs> I don't, I don't but really horizontal else. makes them look wider. No, 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 it doesn't. No, oh, is this an old fable that was wrong from many years ago? Normally, vertical stripes make you look slimmer and horizontal slide stripes make you look... No, I, d I think on socks, it's definitely well, this horizontal. Might, maybe you've got normal size ankles, but you just have continually <laughs> worn socks with, with horizontal stripes on. We're really deviating away yeah, from what we should be talking about. Can someone let us know, about. please, about what, what stripes I should have on my socks? Because um, <laughs> uh, obviously, as you know, I do have a problem of, um, of girth. Uh, anyway, right, the photo, Dan, <laughs> the photo. Uh, the winner in third place this week is from Dan SV. Chinelli Experience 2016. Went on a ride around Bucharest, found myself in an abandoned part of the neighborhood and naturally wanted to take some pics of my bike. Hashtag nice urban. graffiti. Yeah. That's that cool, isn't it? Yeah. The bike really matches it, doesn't it, somehow? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I do, um, yeah. Enjoy your socks, whichever way they're striped. Uh, moving on to second place this week, who's going to receive uh, a GCN Italy t-shirt and a GCN red mug. And it goes to uh, Mahasane Jr. Straight into Peak District three days after learning to ride. Uh, so my three-year-old did a five kilometer loop around Dovestones Reservoir in the Peak District. He was asked for one of my jelly babies from the bar bag as a reward. Uh, he'll be on Strava next. I like the fact that you went for a 5k ride with uh, with your kid there and um, and you didn't give him a jelly baby as a reward. Naturally, he had to ask or for it. Or you thought you might need one yourself. I was, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. No, I like that. Fair play. That's There's awesome, nothing better than watching your child ride a bike for the first time, is there? Yeah, really absolutely. Isn't. Absolutely. Um, although, I was out riding with my son on... Uh, on Saturday. Didn't run over a deer, did he? No, he didn't, but I did have to teach him the meaning of type two fun when we got home. <laughs> <laughs> he moaned the whole way around. When you get back, you're going to have loved it. No, no, he, but literally the whole next day, he was raving about how much fun he'd had. And I was like, that's called type two fun. Uh. Now, yeah. Anyway, uh, first place this week, because we really are deviating quite a lot, aren't we? Uh, winning a GCN Classic sweatshirt in black and white, uh, a GCN Stelvio t shirt as well, and a GCN yellow and black striped. Ah, save Oh, which way are the stripes? Yeah, you definitely. Does <laughs> so your ass look bigger or smaller? <laughs> Indeed. Anyway, the winner, the winning photo is this one from Gary Ledgerwood. Avoiding the storm. He says, a cold evening with strong headwinds at times, but we avoided the rain and got great views, so it's all good. That is a mega photo, isn't it? Fantastic. I mean, it yeah. does look faintly terrifying from a kind of cold and wet perspective. It looks like he's about to turn around and go in the opposite direction, away from that dark black cloud. But yeah, that's oh, a fantastic photo. Yeah, brilliant. Very moody. It is, isn't it? Uh, right, don't forget to get involved ready for next week's GCN show. All you've got to do is upload your most inspirational cycling-related photo to the GCN app and you'll be in with a chance of winning one of the three prizes. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we will start with the news that you might never have to get wet when cycling again. And no, we don't mean moving to Namibia. Or stopping cycling full stop. No. Although, that might be inexpensive compared to this. Maybe what, to moving to Namibia? Moving to Namibia, yes. Uh, this is the Dricycle, Ooh. a fully enclosed, heated, power-pedaled vehicle, which, as you can see, Cy was lucky enough to ride, and we have a full video on it, including Hank's toughest challenge yet, coming out this Saturday. Yeah, dreamy. Uh, right, moving on. Siddy recently celebrated their 60th birthday. 60, would you believe? Yeah. Uh, and rather than getting Ivan Basso to cook up a stir-fry using some Boa Blimey. 
That is a long old reference that City Cycling Shoes. It's in the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Played during every commercial break of every single bike race on TV for, for quite a long period of time. It's a long time. Yeah. Um, they have launched a new shoe that basically harks back to the 90s in that they're multicolored and garish. Well, they certainly stand out. You can tell me that again. Uh, and it seems a lot of our app users actually like them, though. 58% have voted them hot. Yeah, which is a lot more people than, uh, or a lot more a lot higher percentage, should I say, uh, than voted this new Radiohead Brompton Special Edition, which uses very similar colours, but it hasn't worked quite so well, mm. I don't think. Uh, Radiohead being a number of bands, including also the Foo Fighters, who have their own special edition in this new Brompton collection. I wonder whether that Radiohead uh, one is a nod to In Rainbows, one of my favourite albums ever. Is so it really? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. All right, we've got to move on now, though, because Cy is desperate to get onto a brand new study from another one of his favourites, it's the British Medical Journal. Oh, who does not love the BMJ? Right there <laughs> in the pantheon of greats. Uh, anyway, this study, uh, which actually is from the UK, shows even more evidence that daily bike riding is a kind of miracle pill. 263,000 participants were followed, a split between active and non-active commuters, so travelling to work by foot or by bike, versus by car. Over the study period, which was actually some time ago, 2007 to 2010, the active commuters' risk of dying from heart disease was 52% lower, risk of cancer or any form of early death was also 40% lower. Well, that's good news, isn't Mental, it? Another no. life lesson from cycling then. It helps give you more life. There we go. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, we also have a brand new entry into the world's most expensive bikes top 10. Are you ready for this one? Here it is. A rally traveller which just sold at auction for £44,000 or $61,000. Yeah, obviously the price paid at auction was not for the physical value of the bike, <laughs> uh, but rather for who the owner was. Uh, none other than Princess Diana, apparently, who used this bike to commute until she got together with Prince Charles, at which point the monarchy deemed, or the firm, as I was learning, they were called, uh, deemed it an inappropriate mode of transport for a future princess. Which is ridiculous, because you only have to look at uh, the Netherlands to see that well, they yeah. all travel around well, presumably bikes. they just replaced it with a Kalnaga with campy super record on it instead. There we go. I mean, I doubt it, but that would yeah, be I doubt it as for well. a princess. Uh, moving on, good news for cyclists in California now, because you can now go on a ride with a cyclist from a different household without a face mask. Whoa. Just as so long as you've both had both of your vaccines. There we go. Strava KOMs are going to be falling left, right and centre if you can take your, your mask off now. <laughs> um, also, you know, so you, you're also allowed to dine outside with a member of another household without a face mask. Which did make me wonder how it was possible to dine with one before. Well, that's also a good point. Soup through a straw, maybe? <laughs> Not sure. Anyway, more good news for cyclists in Germany now too, as Andreas Schur, the Federal Transport Minister, has said almost one and a half billion euros will be spent on cycling infra infrastructure there, should I say, by the end of 2023. Brocky, that's not long to spend a lot of money. No. The question is though, will there be enough bikes for people to ride? You remember um, a lot of bikes got stuck in the Suez Canal recently, um, on a ship of course. Uh, although that blockage, the ship has now been removed, there is still a major problem. Which is? Which is, the Suez Canal Authority have apparently now seized the ship complete with its 18,000 containers and a gazillion different bikes, and the 25 crew members, and they've demanded mental this, more than $900 million in compensation for the recovery effort, damage to the canal, and damage to the canal's <laughs> rock reputation, and lost revenue as well. Well, that's a nice positive note to end cycling shorts on this week, isn't well, it? Well, you don't have to face a $900 million fine. That is a positive note. <laughs> Hack forward slash bodge of the week now, starting with this one from Johnny B. Trailside bicycle maintenance stand spotted on the Chena River bike path in Fairbanks, Alaska in the USA. Pump, stand, some tools, even some park tools. I think it's a nice gesture at least. How about you? Absolutely. Yes, I do think that's a very nice gesture. Yep, hack. Hack from me as well. And a hack from 95% of you. Nice. That's wonder, how, a... wonder what somebody's thinking at 5%. That's a bodge. Complete bodge. It's definitely not a bodge, isn't it? I think yeah. that, I think that five percent of people are probably just like mm, bit me. Rubbish yeah, dude, bad day. Bodge, 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 bodge. Dislike. <laughs> Don't um, even look at it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, right then. Uh, next up, we have got this one uh, from the boy Hoy at Color Splash. Uh, my physique shoes are getting a bit old and tired. As the weather's bad, I decided to get some paints out to brighten them up. 
half and half designs with colours to match my jerseys makes me smile out on the road. Um, We've seen quite a few custom kicks designs over the years, but yeah. they for me are up there with the best of them. Well, I, I mean, those are full on, aren't they? To the point where I'm actually going to say that's a bit much for my taste. You don't have to wear them, they're his. No, I know, but I'm, I'm going to say that I think you might have bodged that. Blimey. Oh, I know, I'm really sorry. Deem that a I don't want to be like the kind of person that I've just taken nice the mick out of. I mean, it's, it's nicely done, but like but zebra and checkered flag, and then the, the kind of like whatever that is, Harlequin. Well, so I was also having a bad day by the looks of it because 82% yeah, of you went for hack, and I'm going with hack as well. Uh, this one came in from Jerome Roux. Um Custom bike stand. Living in a small apartment, and my wife won't hear of having a bike work stand in the living room. Luckily, there's a great tree outside, a couple of $2 hooks from the hardware store, and I now have a stand for cleaning and working on my bikes, and the apartment doesn't smell like a bike shop. Well, there we go. Fair play. <laughs> I mean, uh, apparently that's the least damaging way of uh, drilling into a tree. It's just to screw it straight in there, apparently. So hopefully the tree is okay. How um, would you keep it secure, though? If it's just outside your apartment. Well, presumably it doesn't like keep it there. Well, you said that the apartment no longer smells like a bike shop. So presumably it's not in the apartment much anymore. Well, well it's not a postcard, mm, as ever. Yeah. I'm going to say, uh, I mean, there's part of me that worries for the tree. Yeah. But I'm going to say, I'm going bodge. Yeah. Don't you put some sort of screws into a tree if you deliberately want to kill them? Well, so apparently, I was reading a book about building tree houses, as you do, and apparently if you put, like, if you wrap things around the tree, then you effectively, like, strangle it, mm. so then it'll die. Whereas if you just drill straight in, you do a bit of damage to a few of the vessels, what are they called? Xylem and flowing, seems right. to remember from A-level <laughs> biology. Um, and then, but otherwise, it's kind of all right. But, um, but it does feel a little bit like, you know, that's quite, a, that's quite a major mm. thing to do. Yeah, because it looks like a lovely old tree, doesn't it? So I'm going bodge. 38% of other people went for bodge, but 62% went for hack. Where well, yeah, going? fair enough. I'd just, I just buy a bike stand if, if it was me. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, next up, Austin J. Grady, 3D printed. Hack! Shoe holder. Um, a rainy day uh, off work led to some 3D printed stuff. I wanted a way to display the shoes in the pain cave. Crudely 3D printed some cleat holders and it worked a treat. Both SPD and Lookio holds the shoes securely well enough. That's brilliant. And they'll be posting the STL files, which is probably 3D printing jargon. I wouldn't know. Um, so you can make your own once I clean up the model. How cool is that? That's what 3D printing is all about, folks just spreading the love so we can all print our own cool stuff. Yeah, maybe somebody can 3D print you a treehouse size. <laughs> uh, right, Jedi Knight was on the show a couple of weeks ago and he's back on with actually the same hack or budge, but we requested a video, so here it is. There we go. You gonna change your mind? I can't remember what I said two weeks ago. <laughs> I think I said hack. It must have been a long time ago because it wasn't last week. It was a week when I was away. Oh, was I've it? never seen this before. I don't remember uh, what I said, but I'm now going for hack. No, I'm going to say I'm going to say hack as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right then. Next up, we've got this one from Darren Mansell. Uh, relocated water bottle. Interesting. Uh, small gravel frame doesn't allow much room for a frame bag and bottles, so gone with one bottle on a dropper. <laughs> well, there we go. It looks like the bottle will then be sat on your down tube, though. Potentially an off-road ride, gradually wearing away at the carbon. Maybe it isn't. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully then it is just a hack. But, um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I will go with hack for that one. Yeah, hack. And then we have this from G Kinning. Chock block problems. Had a customer leave this in the bike shop today. Uh, obviously the. What's it called? The stub at the end of the inner cable there had ripped off, and so instead uh, they had a attached a chock block to it uh, to stop it slipping through. Not something I would have thought of doing, but I would imagine that probably worked all right. Yeah, probably would. Although, how sharp are the ends of cables? You know, like yeah. having it there, oh, the amount of cuts you'd get in your fingertips. No way. Once they started fraying, yeah. they're going back, is there? Yeah, I mean, it's. it's it's definitely a bodge, isn't it, basically? Well, it is a bodge, a but yeah, it's, it's quite a good idea if you have got that problem. But then when are you going to have a chock block out on the open road? So, um... Um, just looking at the username there, this is a long shot, but if G Kinning is Glen Kinning uh, and you are a former mountain biker, um, hello. I used to race against <laughs> a guy called Glen Kinning back in the day. Um, so, uh, yeah, if it's you, uh, get involved in the comment section. 
Uh, right, uh, that brings us to the end of Hackle Bodge with that rather selfish shout out. So mm. Whilst you were talking about it, I've looked at a couple for next week. There's some bangers already. So yeah, oh, well, make that. sure you get involved for Fantastic. two weeks' time uploading to the GCN app. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you've got to do is put a witty caption to a photograph we're about to give you. We will start, as ever, with the results from last week, where this was the photograph uh, taken from Tour of the Alps. Very arty, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very arty. The, the photographers like a good camera uh, mirror shot, don't they? They Out do, the races. Yeah. Uh, the winner this week is Jonathan Lowis with Cy finally unveils his new sunglasses. <laughs> Uh, that a reference to the humongous oversized glasses that uh, Sai thinks he can carry off yeah. at the moment. Yeah, uh, Pock's new welding glasses that uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan, I'm not going to lie, I love them. Uh, and you know, if I feel like I can carry them off, that's the most important thing. Surely. Yes. Yeah, but Deep. you don't feel like you can carry off uh, zebra striped shoes with pink and blue check. No, flag. they would not make me feel cool. I'm not going to lie. No, uh, that's but the glasses do. They do. Somehow. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they really do. Right, this week's photo is this one of Nielsen Paulus of EF Education Nippo. Wow. Uh, we're going to get you started. All the gear and no idea. <laughs> or rate my aero position. <laughs> if you're wondering what's going on, that is a very steep cobbled climb on the final stage time trial of the Tour de Romandie. It looks so brilliantly wrong, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Absolutely genius. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, fantastic. I could look at that photo and chuckle all day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, see if you can beat Dan's caption. That was a really good one this week, Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Really good. Yeah, I like that. Uh, right then, yeah, stick your caption in the comment section down below and we will pick a winner next week. We've picked out a few of our favourite comments, as we normally do, before we let you know what's coming up on the channel over the next week. Starting with this one that came in underneath Cycling Champion versus Beginner on an e-bike. Tommy Phillips, can't lie, GCN are going to need to find a new beginner. And this, of course, a reference to Freddie, who since he first featured on the video, has lost a lot of weight and got a lot fitter. So I think, Tommy, you're probably right. I think you are, right? Days are numbered as a beginner, at least, aren't they? Yeah. So, uh, so next up, it'll be uh, amateur on an e-bike versus uh, cycling champion. So, uh, no, fair play to Freddie though. He's like, he's good. He's got the bug. He has I got the bug. He say. has got the bug. Yeah. Uh, right then, underneath how to find people to ride with, uh, Jesus Christ said, uh, "I prefer oh, riding alone." What's that? Not the real one. No, I assume not. Um, <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, that joke was bad in itself. But with that. Reaction time <laughs> made even worse. <coughs> Sorry. I, I genuinely didn't hear me. <laughs> anyway, he said, for me, it's like a bit of meditation. So, uh, so a lot yeah. of people saying that they preferred riding alone. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't really the video for you. Not really. That was the case. No, but anyway, really uh, watching that. But secret um, Brad wrote, "Gotta love the way Hank is absolutely knackered and out of breath, whilst Manon is just cruising alongside." And I must admit, I noticed the same thing during that when I watched that video. <laughs> He's struggling to get he's struggling to get the words out, Hank, because he's so out of breath compared to Manon. You could organise a social ride or a racy ride. Yeah, what you could do is post it on a group on social media and see what the interest is like, and hopefully you'll get some buddies to ride with you after work. Yeah, Manon is finally cracked him. Manon's going good. A minute. What can you say? Uh, right, underneath last week's show, uh, Jody Hall said, I used to work at Peddler Bikeway in the Forest of Dean here in the UK, and we had one of those yellow buddy bikes for years. Apparently, the weight of the riders don't matter. You could actually ride it on your own as the bike just tilted over. It was great fun. So we do need to get on one of those, and because the Forest of Dean is not far from GCNHQ. It's not. GMBN are often there, aren't they? Indeed, so maybe if they still got one, if, if you work at Peddler Bikeway in the Forest of Dean and you have got a buddy bike, can you let us know? And um, we might have to come up there and go for a bike ride on it. <laughs> when the Giro's finished, and you can yeah. get a day off. We could, get, we could get Connor on one side and rope Emma Pooley back in the second <laughs> side. That'd be, good. That'd be interesting to watch. Uh, meanwhile, Carl W. Byrne. Is that right? Carl, you? Kyle? Kyle W. Byrne. That's what I said originally, but I'm always nervous these days, Sai. Si. Well, I so say you should After be. Poo Carl, <laughs> see his name nerd. Was. Seafood nerd. Uh, anyway, <coughs> he wrote in saying, My talent is so hidden, I still haven't found it. Yeah. I know yeah, that's the case for many of yeah. us, really, isn't it? Uh, right, what's coming up on the channel over the next week? Well, on Wednesday, we've got five ways to increase your average speed on a bike, something I think we always want to try and do. Uh, on Thursday, it's the tech show and a couple and another indoor training session, should I say, over on GCN Training. Friday, how to use your GPS 
when you're out cycling. Might seem obvious, particularly to those of you who've used it for quite some time, but it is not for everybody, so that it'll be a nice guide for you. Indeed, yeah. Then on Saturday, we've got a great little pun for the title. Seismic shift, okay, but I'm super excited about this. Um, it's Shimano's 100th anniversary this year, right? They're not making a big song and dance out of it, but we thought we would on their behalf, basically. Uh, so Ollie and Alex have found four classic <coughs> bikes, each of which is a moment in time for when Shimano took a huge step forward with technology. So uh, what have we got in there? We've got STIs, so shifting on your, on your handlebars. Uh, we've also got indexing. That's right, that's how you shift, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Or at least you do on mechanical. Um, and, uh, and DI2s in there as well. But do make sure you check that one out, super cool. And then we've got in-depth looks at each of those innovations coming up on the tech channel uh, in the following weeks. But mm. um, they borrowed some kit from you for that video, didn't they? They did, yeah. Mm. I told them to look after it. Uh, yeah. Very valuable. Stay tuned, find Not out what it is. Not as much as the Lady Diana bike from Rally, but valuable to me. Well, uh, today you haven't put it on eBay yet, have you? No, could go 45 grand, couldn't it? Imagine that. Well, um, if you pay 45 for it, let me know, because I'd probably take that. <laughs> did, you, did, you get the, did you give them the white one or the black one? Uh, oh, you're talking about shorts? Yeah. Uh, black. Black oh, shorts and jersey. That's a shame. <laughs> yeah. That is a shame. Uh, uh, right, anyway. Also, on GCN anyway, Racing. We haven't done Sunday yet. No, we're not. Sorry, on that we just done Sunday. That. Yeah, so Sunday is that aforementioned dry-cycle. So uh, it's truly bonkers. Uh, I got to take it for a little bit of a uh, spin uh, around our local streets and then challenged Hank to what is undoubtedly his toughest test yet. <laughs> yeah. Can I get onto the racing now? You can. Go for it. Well, we mentioned the Giro d'Italia already. Of course, we are going to have our big GCN preview coming out for you. Bank holiday's mucked us up slightly, hasn't it? But it should be out either today or tomorrow if you're watching this show on the day that it comes out. Uh, that all starts on Saturday, but it's not the only racing in May and even this week. Uh, we've also got the Volta Algarve, which was postponed from February. That starts on Wednesday and runs through to Sunday. And we've also got daily highlights of the Tour de Rwanda. Uh, so two stages are already up on the GCN Plus app. Hopefully another one by the time you watch this. Uh, it's a race I think a lot of us have wanted to have some footage from for quite some time, having seen some amazing photos and read some amazing stories from that race over the last few years. Indeed, yeah, do make sure you check that one out. Uh, and of course, we've got two brand new documentaries dropping for you this week as well. Dan, first up, Chris Boardman, the latest in our legend series, isn't it? So Chris Boardman, most of you will know who he is, but if you don't, he is a former Olympic champion who had that Lotus bike. That's basically what he's remembered for, but he did a whole host of other things, including wearing the yellow jersey at the Tour de Bloom in France as well. So he is a legend, and he's the latest person to feature in that series. Yeah, and then something completely different at the end of the week. Um, we're, we've made a film basically commemorating and celebrating uh, some of the soldiers from World War One who rode bikes. So it was like a, a cycling battalion. Uh, so we've got period bikes. We've met uh, some of the relatives of the soldiers who rode bikes in battle. It's quite, it's quite a poignant film. That Effectively, one, that should be part of the legend series as well, really. Absolutely, it? it should. But uh, but yeah. So make sure you check that one out. It's. Um, well, it's a slice of history I did not know about. So, mm. uh, yeah, education for me. Right, I look forward to watching both of those because I haven't seen either of them yet. But we're going to wrap up the GSIN show for this week. It's been remarkable reading the comments since we've said something like, let us know if you've got through to the end. For some reason, I just thought no one would stick with us for more than about half of this show. But remarkably, a lot of you do. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it this week. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Yeah, absolutely. Medals all around for you lot that are stuck with us. Um, and apologies for the wonky photo early on as well. That was... Um, Point it out. Yeah, yeah, sorry. 